What you doing, watermelons? I am back. I'm about to show you guys what I did record yesterday shortly after I got back to my car after everything happened. I don't go into a whole lot of detail in the video because like I said it was just minutes after getting back to my car and I was still just out of it and trying to process and remember everything that had happened. Um, but all the details of what I do remember are in the post and I'll go ahead and, and include those same pictures just to show you like what all kind of happened to me. I did see a couple of comments where people were accusing me of faking an injury and it really sucks. It seems like everything I post or talk about People think I'm just lying about it. I've never in my life faked an injury and I'm just not a liar. What's ironic about those accusations is that lying is my number one biggest pet peeve and it's a major reason why I'm not in a relationship. I hate lying and I make it a point to give every detail of the truth. I just, I just don't lie and even if I tried to lie, you would be able to tell because I'm not a good liar. I'm not. Um, I feel like I have to say this again and I know that I don't but a lot of people are just they think that I'm on here trying to get sympathy trying to get money from people and that's just not the case guys like I never wanted money from any of this. I never asked for money. I don't want sympathy from people like this is my life this is what's happening in my life and I'm sharing it with you guys and I just I don't understand why people have to sit on my channel and just throw out all these hate comments why don't you just leave like why don't you just get off if you dislike me that much and if you think so low of me then just go to another channel I don't understand why you're still here talking about me in such a negative light and all the things that are being said are just not true. I never scammed people. I don't go out and spend money on lavish hotels. The hotel that I showed you guys in that one video was actually cheaper those two nights that I stayed there. It was cheaper than the Holiday Inn, not far from it. Um, I actually had gotten a really good deal on that hotel for those two days. There was like a special going on and it was significantly cheaper than the Holiday Inn. So I was like, well, why not? Like I get to experience downtown LA, a new hotel. And obviously I recorded it because I wanted to show people who haven't been to LA, like what a downtown LA um, hotel looks like. Um, I, I, I don't like spending money, to be honest. Um, I didn't even want to get myself a hotel, but I felt like I needed it. Um, there are times where I just need to stretch out my legs and take a hot bath and, and sleep in a bed. And I've in the eight months that I've been living in my car, I've only done that three times, uh, gotten a hotel. And two of those times were, I think one was a Motel 6 and the other was a Holiday Inn, but they weren't expensive hotels. I don't throw out my money. I'm not out here buying myself new clothes. It's another thing I saw. Uh, I don't have new clothes. I don't. I haven't bought new clothes in I don't know how long. Um, I wear a lot of tank tops, um, small, just simple tank tops and you can roll them up and like they don't take up a lot of space so I have a lot of those. Um, and head headbands, head wraps, that's pretty much my attire. People just have a very skewed perception of me. And I, I really, really hate that because I get on here and I tell people my truth and what I'm doing and it does get discouraging at times. Um, I, I know that there's going to be trolls. I totally get that. But I'm noticing a, a lot of the same things are just being repeated. And I feel like I've addressed everything other than one thing that will be shared on my time because that's my story that's my truth um, i'm not hiding anything i haven't hid anything since i've started this channel everything i've said has been true and i 
do intend to address everything, but it's going to be on my time and not when the dogs bark. That's my story and that's my heart and that's my testimony. And I'm not going to feel rushed into sharing something that means everything to me. You know, to sum that all up, I, I understand that there's going to be haters and trolls and naysayers all the time. I totally get that. But everything just seems so skewed and so wrong and people are just totally wrong about me and I don't know how else to share myself and my truth other than how I'm doing it now. In my opinion, I feel like I've handled most of this with grace and compassion and understanding of where the hate comes from. Um, understanding that opinions don't really matter. But then again, they do because I want people to know the real me. You know, I want them to understand me and hear my side of the story instead of making up these storylines that people are feeding into that are just absolutely false. So I'm doing the best I can. So the interview with Jude, Rude Jude, I don't even really know what to call him. I guess Jude, his last name's Angelini, I think. <laughs> um, so everything was good. Everything was on schedule. Um, John Matthews is actually the producer that I have been talking to. He is Jude's um, direct producer. Um, and I've been speaking with him over the phone uh, via text. We did video chat to test out the sound and the quality and everything to make sure that everything was good to go for the interview. Um, actually, the first time, so they wanted me to come in and do the interview, like come into the Sirius XM office um, where they have the studio, but I'm not vaccinated and I'm not for being vaccinated. So we kind of had no choice but to do it over Zoom. Um, and so I was scheduled, I, I forget what day, I think it was on a Friday, I was scheduled to do the interview um, with Jude. I spoke to John over the phone everything was good to go um, and then about an hour before the interview I get a text or a call I can't remember I think it was a text the first time um, from John saying hey I'm so sorry we're gonna have to reschedule Jude's not feeling well and I was like hey I totally get that I understand not feeling well it's all good just let me know when you'd like to reschedule and then the following week the following Wednesday, I believe, um, I got a text message from John again saying, hey, can we do the interview this coming Friday? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Like, <laughs> my schedule is pretty wide open, so I'm down for whenever. Um, oh, but before that, I did actually text John because that same night he told me that we had to reschedule because Jude was sick. Um, I saw tweets of like Jude interviewing other people and it showed like a picture with the person. I think this guy's name was Mike um, and to me he didn't look sick uh, and I, I didn't want to be played um, and I didn't want to be naive about the situation. So I texted John and I was like, look, and I sent him a screenshot and I was like, hey, if Jude's not sick, that's, that's cool. Like I would just appreciate honesty. Um, I'm all about transparency if you guys changed your mind about having me on the show or if Jude just decided he didn't want me on the show or if something else happened like you can tell me um, I would rather you be transparent with me and honest with me um, and just let me know like straight up what's up um, but I did also say that you know like I apologize if I'm jumping to conclusions that's just what it kind of looks like from my point of view and he was like, no, no, um, he was not feeling well. The call-in was a, kind of a last minute deal. Um, Jude really isn't feeling well. I'll explain later on. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, so I brushed it off. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but if they lose my trust, then they lose my trust. <laughs> 
So I was, I was still hopeful. I was like, okay, well, I know things happen and I'm not going to jump to conclusions and think that they were just lying to me um, or whatever. I'm just, I'm going to think the best. And I mean, worst case scenario, I don't do the interview. It was just an interview, you know, like it's, it's not a terrible thing. And I know Hollywood, I know how Hollywood works. Um, a lot of fast talkers, a lot of sweet talkers, uh, a lot of promises, broken promises made. Um, so I'm not naive to the game, but I, I told him, I was like, you can be straight up with me. Like I'm, I'm a chill person. I'm not going to like get mad or anything. Um, again, I just don't like lying. Like lying is one thing in this, in this life that I can say that I hate. I don't like the word hate, but I hate lying and I hate yeah, I just hate lying. <laughs> I don't want to say I hate liars, but I hate lying. Um, and so the following week, I get a text from John again saying, Hey, could we do the interview this coming Friday? And I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. And he gave me a time and we were all good to go. We talked maybe like an hour before the interview. Um, we tested out my headphones to make sure the sound was good. Uh, we zoomed to make sure that he could see me, I could see him, all, all was good to go. He even asked me a few questions um, of things that they were planning on bringing up and they were wanting clarification on, uh, a couple answers on. So I'm like, okay, this is really gonna happen. Like, they're getting the questions ready. Uh, it's just a few minutes before I go on air and it's happening. I was a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Like I haven't had an interview like ever, especially one like about my personal life and you know, about my YouTube channel and all that. So I was a little nervous, but I was excited. <laughs> 15 minutes, like almost to the T, 15 minutes before the interview starts, I get a call from John. He was very nice. He was like, hi, my friend, you have been so unbelievably patient and cool about this whole thing. I really, really appreciate you, but we're going to have to bump you again. And I was just like, I didn't know what to say at first. I was like, okay, like, what's up? And he said, Jude's just still not feeling well. Now, I was starting to get skeptical because this was a full week later, um, and from the looks of Twitter and YouTube, he was still going on with his shows, so I'm thinking, all right, like, something is up. Why don't they just tell me the truth? Like, why don't they just tell me straight up what's really going on? If they don't want me on the show, or if they did change their mind, I wouldn't think that they would attempt to keep rescheduling and test out my sound and ask me these questions and really get me prepped for the interview. Um, I would think that they'd have balls enough to just tell me straight up something changed, we changed our mind, whatever. That's why I was trying to be so straight up with him in the beginning because I know that I come off as like a sweet and some people even say naive person and I'm not <laughs> naive. Um, I just want honesty, you know, like I'm a big girl. I can handle it. Just lay it on me. Just tell me. But he did say on the phone, Jude really was still sick. He was not feeling well. He, and that he would explain it to me another day and that they plan on making it up to me. Now, I don't need them to make it up to me. Um, I don't expect that. Um, that's cool that he was nice. Um, about it and that he would say that I I want to believe but at this point I just don't know it doesn't make sense to me because if if they didn't want me on their show I, I would assume that they would just straight up tell me um, or if, if plans changed or whatever but they said again that they want to reschedule and that they would make it up to me and that they would talk with me. They would keep in touch and talk to me soon. So that's the last I heard of that. And that was last Friday. So yeah, it's been about a week now. 
so that's what happened there. Um, I told him on the phone, I was like, man, this, this sucks. I'm not going to lie. I don't really know what to tell my viewers. Um, I was hyped about the interview. I told my viewers about the interview and John was just like, I know, I'm so sorry. We'll make it up to you, I promise. And that was pretty much all that was said. By then, I was just like, you know what, I just, I want to spend some time away from social media. I wasn't down and out. I needed time for some spiritual growth. Um, I am a very spiritual person and that time with God is very, very essential and important to me, especially with everything that my life entails. You know, I am 100% honest with you guys. I am very transparent. I haven't hid anything and I'm not hiding anything. And you guys will eventually know every single detail of my life <laughs> at this rate. Um, almost two months into this YouTube channel and practically my entire life has been spilled out and misinterpreted for the most part. I'm, I'll say that. <laughs> it's just been misinterpreted and I am I seem to be misunderstood by a lot of people. Um, but the ones that are out there defending me and supporting me and taking the time to write out nice comments, I, I truly appreciate you. Um, I'm a tough girl though, like I, I'm kind of used to life knocking me on my ass, <laughs> um, but I always come out stronger. Things always turn around. Uh, I just, I have to stay in faith and keep my head up and keep marching on. That's the only way I can do this and get through it. So for the people who are still here supporting me and um, understand me, I love you. I love you all so much. and. I, I really do feel like I have a YouTube family and that means a lot to me like even <laughs> even like going to um, I mean with that incident yesterday somebody a couple people actually uh, recognized me from my channel and then I go into the laundry mat just I washed my bedding my uh, sleeping bag <laughs> I washed it oh it's so nice to have clean bedding um, Someone in the laundromat recognized me, and but they're also like kind. It's like I I have family now. Like I got people that are out here like supporting me and loving me and like telling me to keep on going and telling me how much I inspire them. And really, that is my drive at this point. That's what's keeping me going is the people who appreciate me and are seeing changes in their lives because of the influence that I'm giving them and it's it's incredible I'm just rambling but I did want to update you guys um again I'm sorry about this clip that I'm about to show it's it's not very detailed um I, I noticed a lot of like nurses were chiming in saying that they thought it was this or this so if you do want to know the details of what I experienced yesterday um I do have a post on it and I will try to include that somewhere in this video because <laughs> um, it, it, it was pretty crazy man I, I don't know what it was uh, I've never had something like that happen to me I've had dizzy spells before um, a while back but nothing like this like nothing that put me on the ground like this oh and for the people who think that I'm just faking this the guy that initially helped me, like who saw everything happen, he saw me fall. Um, he was like my first responder and he, he knew me from my channel. So I have a witness out there, at least one. I know there were multiple people. There were actually a lot of people. I feel like I heard a lot of voices, but I don't, I don't remember seeing the crowd or anything. Um, but the guy knew me from my channel and he saw it all happen. I understand people thinking that I would fake an injury I get it if I really think about it um, in my early videos I mentioned and this is so true that I've basically lived under a rock <laughs> for the past couple of years and so I forget how corrupt and distorted our world is um, and I and that 
leads me to kind of just more understand why people think I'm a liar and a scammer and a faker because there are so many people out there like that that do it in a heartbeat without a second thought and that to me is sick um, and I could never ever be that type of person and I, I'm just sorry that you guys really think that of me or some of you think that of me um, but that's really not the case. I'm, I'm genuine, I'm transparent, and I'm not what people are making me out to be. And I'm hoping that one day everybody will be able to see that. But until then, I'm taking this day by day and uh, doing the best that I can. I'm gonna go, oh, that's where I was getting at. I was just gonna give you an update on how I'm feeling. Um, pretty sore, not gonna lie. I, when I was walking into the laundromat, I, was just wobbling um, my leg my knee my knees are what hurt the worst my my everything hurts um, I can't help right now but to walk with a limp because my I think I made like direct impact with my kneecap it just uh, it's like right in the middle of my knee and it hurts to extend and bend my leg I can do it I don't think anything's broken or damaged or anything I think it's just bruised pretty badly underneath but other than that as you can see I'm okay like uh, it did hurt to shower oh I had to get a tetanus shot by the way I forgot that was on there so that arm is sore from the shot <laughs> but yeah I'm okay like just a little banged up a little sore but I'm gonna live I'm good uh, my grandpa always taught me to walk it off, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to probably go take a nice long walk on the beach, get some sunshine, and yep, get back to me. <laughs> Alright, I love you. I love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Mwah. Hey guys. Wow, I don't even know where to begin. Um, I'm sorry if I sound a little off. I am a little off. Um, I just got out of the hospital. I've got, <laughs> I just noticed on my walk that I still had the stickies. Um, I was in Target and coming out, I don't really remember what happened. Um, I just know that I, I fell pretty hard. Um, the last thing I remember was being at checkout and walking through like the little lobby area. Uh, right by the door was like the last image I had. Um, my vision was already going bad. Like I felt fine walking into the store. Checking out, I started feeling a little lightheaded and dizzy and my vision was getting spotty. And then while I was watching the door open, that's kind of when everything went um, negative. That's how, that's the best way I can describe how I was seeing things is like if you've ever seen negative versions of a picture where it's just like bluish black crazy looking, all you can see is outlines, that's what I was seeing and that, that's what I saw right before apparently I fell. I don't know how I fell. Um, but I've got, and I'll include pictures, uh, but I've got a scrape and a bruise coming in right up here. Um, both my knees are scraped up. I'm sore. I feel like I was in a car accident. I must have hit pretty hard. It was insane. Um, I can barely remember, like I just remember waking up and there being people around me. Um, a lady had her, a light shined in my eyes and she was saying something about my pupils not responding. I couldn't see anything and I couldn't feel anything. I didn't know what was going on or where I was or who was around me, but I heard a lot of voices. And I tried to stand back up and I remember telling the guy that I think I just tripped over my own feet, which I thought that's what happened. But my body just gave out apparently and I just fell flat to the ground. I remember trying to snap myself out of it, like kind of shaking my head and bringing myself to because I thought maybe I just had like a little lightheaded spell, but it wasn't going away. 
I remember my body was just like I was just laying on the concrete and my body was convulsing um, I was shaking uncontrollably and I got really cold really fast uh, I looked down at my hand and my skin like was just so white and the tips of my fingers were blue so I could only imagine how my face looked at the time um, at this point I think that we were just waiting on the paramedics I, I still feel like so out of it um, and just in shock by what happened I, I would love to look at the surveillance cameras and see exactly how it happened but I was I was just gone I get to the hospital and, and they run some tests and uh, he said the doctor said that there's a long list of things that can cause somebody to pass out uh, the first thing that they checked me for was uh, anemia and he said that um, I do look to be a little anemic but he said that it would take extreme anemia for me to fall like that for me to just pass out like that um, but because I'm young and healthy it's hard to narrow it down to something more definite um, I do feel like tightness in my chest like there was pain there um, that apparently I was just unaware of at the time but it almost feels like it, it's bruised uh, so I asked him I said you know did I could I possibly have had a heart attack a stroke he checked the EKG and he said everything there looked fine my test looked okay he said the only thing that he noticed was low blood sugar and low blood pressure um, and that was one thing that I heard the paramedics say a few times was that my blood pressure was low um, and I felt weak I couldn't move I couldn't speak I could barely breathe um, it was such an awful feeling like I can't even really explain it like, I just felt like my body was shutting down I thought that I hit my head so hard I like had a concussion I don't even know um, but I just walked about two miles in an 83 degree weather. Got to a point where there's like no more walkway. The bike path even ends right there. So I was like, shoot, I don't know how I'm gonna get to Target where my car is. I'm like sitting on a curb in the shade. <laughs> my knees are killing me. I had just walked about two miles. They're like throbbing. Every, my whole body just hurts and I'm hot and I'm dehydrated. I thought that I was gonna start getting lightheaded again. So I found a place under a tree and I called for a lift and I paid for one and apparently he arrived but he couldn't find me and I couldn't find him so I still got charged for the lift plus an inconvenience fee for being a no-show. So I got charged twice for a lift that I didn't even get <laughs> and so at that point I didn't want to call another lift because I don't... I, the area I was in was pretty like crazy traffic wise and so I, I didn't want to do that whole thing again and him not even find me again because um, I talked to him for a second I called right back and I said hey can you please turn around I couldn't find you and he was like sorry I already marked you as a no-show so that sucked <laughs> and I got desperate so I just started looking around the parking lot and I approached this man he looked like he had a good vibe about him a good aura and I just swallowed my pride and I know I look like a total beggar I'm just like sitting on a curb I've got my hospital papers in my hand and I'm just like looking around people are staring at me I approached him I said excuse me sir I am so sorry to bother you I don't ever approach people like this um, I don't ever ask for favors like this but could you please possibly give me a ride just right down the road to a uh, target my car is there I just left the hospital um, and I can't walk any further. He was very nice and he agreed to um, bring me back to my car. We had a, a nice little short conversation. He said that he knows how it feels. He was in a car accident and he had to walk a ways to um, until somebody was able to give him a ride. So he said that he's been in my, my shoes. So it's, it's really nice to know that, you know, <laughs> people out there have uh, been in the same position I have, kind of. But yes, I'm, I'm so thankful that this complete stranger turned out to be a nice person. He was nice enough to give me a ride. I tried to give him some money for gas, but he wouldn't accept it. Um, but I'm very, very thankful. And um, I'm just out of it. Uh, I, I replaced my order um, for pickup. 
here at Target because I don't want to go back in the store. What happened was I was trying to check out and my card, there was something wrong with my card. It, I was just messing with my banking app too and so I think that I had to like fix something. Anyways, I told the guy that I would be right back because I was going to go to my car and get my other card. And that's when it all happened. So I had him just set my stuff aside. That's when everything went bad. And I just, I just feel sore and I feel off. Um, I don't quite feel myself. I'm a little embarrassed. Uh, apparently that whole scenario brought a lot of attention and I hate the hospital. Had I had the choice to go to the hospital or not, I totally would have said no, but that point in time I was completely helpless. My, I couldn't move my body, I couldn't talk, I could barely see. I was just an all-around mess and I had no choice but to be hospitalized. But luckily, they don't think it was anything serious. Um, I just, I pray to God that that's all it was. I just hope it was just a moment and nothing like serious, but I'm going to take the rest of the day to rest. Um, just waiting on my order to be prepared. I, I don't want to walk anymore. My body hurts. I just want to relax. <laughs> I want to get my groceries. Probably just chill here for a minute and uh, wait on my groceries and then yeah, I'll figure out what to do. I'll probably just um, like lay down and, and read some of my emails or something but anyways I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on yeah I love you Thank you.